Mix FM. You have been away for a while, but the expectation, like we, we were mentioning before, the expectation leading up to this album, I mean, the expectation leading up to this interview for me has been uh, right. almost like, you, you know, giving the, the birth to, the, to an album. So you must be glad it's it's finally out and the, and just a huge sense of relief now yes definitely i mean it's i mean because we actually finished um working on this album back at the end of april beginning of may f for us it feels as though it's been like you know very current since then um and it's just very bizarre to think okay we've been out doing all this touring and the album's not even out yet so the fact that it's coming out in a mm. week it, it is a big big relief mm. and we also we, i mean also the past sort of three months and doing the dates in the summer and it was a really conscious thing to to try and dissipate some of that mm. expectation because you know I, when when OK Computer was released it was released this you know we went out to Barcelona and we had this week and we thought it was amazing we thought you, you know the, the press are flying in people are flying we're doing some of these these gigs in Barcelona and actually the pressure of it was it was just too much you know mm. and right at the beginning of the the whole touring so by sort of show nine which was glastonbury mm -hmm. you know we were we were absolutely shagged we were completely and, and we had another nine months of touring so what we've tried to do like part of going out and playing live and part of what we do on the net and um is not to have this sort of we we just don't feel comfortable with like here's the next radiohead album it's it's not something that you know we part of what we're trying to get into now is a cycle that hopefully people will get bored of us in a way you know by by meaning that we're we're, we're going to have an album out every year so it's not going to be like every two or three years there's this radiohead mm. album that mm. sort of comes from nowhere yeah. it's going to be get bored of us so why shouldn't anybody <laughs> else do <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> But um, how, talking about playing live, I mean, we're talking before you go off to soundcheck, which is why you, you couldn't come into, uh, into the studio live today, but you, you're soundchecking for tonight's gig. I mean, so far, um, two nights out of three, Phil, how's it gone at Victoria Park? Um, it's uh, on the graph, it's becoming, been becoming, a, there's a, a gradient down, going downwards on, on the tension levels, I think. Right. Um, I mean, inevitably, you know, there's, there's this whole thing that, surrounds a london show mm. um and it's actually really nice being able to do three shows here because you can spread that out a bit much and you actually get through that that kind of pain barrier on the first show so the first one was probably the most tense of, of this tour so far of the year wasn't it yeah um but last night you know after 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 you know seemed seemed to be fairly well received on on saturday night i think we were much more relaxed and so tonight you know Oh, God, we're going to be so laid back, aren't we? So laid back, mate. <laughs> we're going to be, you know, relax. Yeah. <laughs> but this is more enjoyable. I mean, presumably the summer meltdown thing was like, oh, this is just we're, we're guests of somebody, so we feel a totally. bit more. Totally, it was, you know, it's Scott Walker's thing, yeah. and it was it was great because we were one of a number of of, of bands, and we can sort of slip in under the net if you like. Mm. And um, that hasn't happened for a while, has it? When you've been one of a number of bands on. Well, no. Well, I mean, apart from doing festivals, apart from say Glastonbury, but that was that was a long time ago. So yeah, it was really good, and it was it was it it definitely, um, you know, it definitely. I mean, that was really the reason why we went touring the summer because we got this invitation last Christmas from Scott Walker, and uh, you know, and it was a handwritten invitation. It's like, well, we've got to do this, you know. The How man cool is, is that? Is that framed somewhere? Certainly oh, is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. And a lock and key. Yeah. <laughs> that must have been an amazing compliment to get. Yeah. Asked. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. And so we fitted in some live dates around that because that was that seemed like a you know, something that we shouldn't turn down. But with this tour, um, which isn't really a tour, is it? It's it's well it's a few what dates. Mean? It's it's what a few dates. Well in the radio it's hit it from our <laughs> angle. It's not it's not an eighteen month <laughs> world tour, but it's like <laughs> it's it's not like with OK Computer, it's like here we go and uh, it's you're on the road forever. I just wondered, because of the expectation that we talked about and with getting the album out, did you suddenly think, Oh god, we've got to go and tour this now? Well we're not gonna do that touring again like no. OK Computer. It's like well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, the actual touring isn't a response or like a promotion of, of the album. We, you know, we've gone out touring because we actually got the taste back for it. Really, we did. Um, at the end of last year, we did did a webcast, and as kind of an impromptu thing at the end, we actually all sat down and bashed through a song acoustically. And I think we actually we got caught the bug again from there, really, yeah, didn't we? Yeah. We thought, okay, 
no, we want to go out and do this again, but we want to go out and tour for touring's sake, really. So, you know, it had to be set up properly so there'd be interesting dates for us to do, something that we get excited about, and a schedule which, you know, you didn't feel so, you know, you'd come out of it, the end of it brain dead, really. Mm. So, hopefully, that's, I think that's, seems to be going that way anyway. Yeah. And therefore, you feel more relaxed about the whole thing. Yeah, well, it's, you know, you don't have nine months of mm. dates penciled in or, 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 or confirmed ahead of you, you can mm. see light at the end of the tunnel in it. And that was that's the problem with the way that, you know, I think you talk to most bands by when they're sort of, you know, doing a world tour that's sort of nine months or whatever, you talk to them after three months and they, they are they are dead from the waist up. You know, they're, they're tired, they probably have to play the same songs. And one of the beauties of our position is we've got like a, a song list we've got 60 odd songs on there mm. and we're doing half the set is new material we change the set every single night different order sometimes it you know sometimes it's good sometimes it's completely crap but that's you you, you have to keep it interesting yeah and um and and so now it, it, it it's we're, we're doing it for the right reasons rather than using even doing cover versions yeah yeah totally <laughs> really what cover versions are you doing um the thief a can song uh-huh and also, we do a very ropey version of Shut by both sides. Magazine, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll probably play that in Warrington. Slows up about halfway through, actually, because you know we're old blokes these days, so we can't keep the pace. <laughs> that's ace. I mean, that's that's never happened before, is it? What covers? Yeah, we did um, Rhinestone, nobody, Rhinestone Cowboy, Cowboy in the early days, and nobody does it better. Nobody does it better. And we once did a version of Union City Blue. Oh, it was appalling. Which was awful. Really, really, bad. really Such bad. Such an insult to the original. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if there's any bootlegs of that. Oh, there are. Oh, there are. Because yeah. it was like, it was stupidly it was done. The one time we played it was on a a live uh, session on a French radio station. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it goes out on FM. So good Please thing. Please don't get that and search for it. <laughs> We're going to talk about, um, obviously about tracks from the album, and one of the first ones that I wanted to play was National Anthem. And I never thought I'd ask any members of Radiohead this, if there was any jazz element to their music. But uh, on this track, there certainly is. I mean, tell us about National Anthem, Phil. National Anthem, we actually started recording that song uh, to over two years ago. After the last UK tour, we went in and we were finishing off a B-side. And the rhythm track for, for National Anthem was actually hatched then. Um, and it was, you know, at the time, it wasn't really working, so we left it for two years, came back to it, and something started to gel there, really. I know? thought it, w it was it was left because your drums were so good on it. Oh, why did you know? I mean, that. <laughs> that we, didn't, we couldn't do what it justice. Are you asked today? <laughs> I, I, I feel some big favour coming. <laughs> I just love your drums. <laughs> I have you very high in my monitor, too, as well. Yeah. As okay. <laughs> The Mutual Appreciation yeah, Society, <laughs> the new radio heads. Yeah, yeah. The, the lovey radio yeah, head, yeah. touchy feet. Yeah. So this is a two-year-old song, I didn't realise it was quite as old. It's older, than, it's older than that. Yeah. I remember we rehearsed it. When we were rehearsing for the Benz in, um, in our rehearsal studio, we rehearsed it, and that would be back at early 94. But it was, it was kind of, then it sounded sort of, there's a band, a great band called Kitchens of Distinction. Oh, was, why weren't they huge? They were great, and it was sounding distinctly Kitchens of Distinction. I think, you know, there's a semi sort of rip off going on there. Right. So, um, you know, give, first it five, time give it five years, everyone forgets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were on um, One Little Indian or something. That's right. Yeah. yeah. First time I opened Open the catch. Capsule. Fantastic yeah. record. Great. I, I actually rode for them in uh, for one gig because up at Manchester University in Did 1988. You? Yeah. And uh, it was a Saturday because they were short of, you know, like people, PA humpers or whatever. And um, and I, I remember because I never heard anything by them and they were opening up for, uh, oh God, they're an Aussie band. I forget. It wasn't the go-between. So opening up for, um, maybe it was the Triffids. Mm. Yeah, it was the Triffids. I think 88 or something. And uh, I remember the sound, they did the sound check, you know, they were, they were the opening band and this colossal sound, it was just amazing oh. what the guitarist used to do on, with his pedals. It's great doing interviews with you, because I mean, uh, all these little facts, all these little disclosures come yeah. out, which I have no <laughs> idea about. And you've known him yeah. for how long yeah. now? 
Too long. We don't spend enough time together. That's our problem. No. That's all changing on this tour, it would seem. Yeah. You're a... Apart from the separate buses and the separate hotels. <laughs> yeah, five buses. That must. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. very costly. Um, was it? Uh, it must be a great relief to be able to get your the tent and everything together. How's the tent holding up? Two nights in, at London, at least. It, um, leaking on stage, but uh, anybody in the audience is bone dry. I think. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Why did you decide to go with a tent? Um. It was kind of a reaction to, to the last UK tour we did, which was in the, you know, Wembley Arena, NEC, which, you know, at the time had its novelty value for us, and, you know, we responded to that. But I think looking back on it just didn't seem an appropriate place for us to be playing this time round, really. So we wanted to have that kind of size be able to play to that size audience again but actually have something which felt a bit more intimate mm. something which you know we, we would actually have control over how uh, you know the, the venue would be presented or whatever mm. um and so you know it is something well certainly something different for us as well so you know it's that brings its its own excitement with it as yeah well. and you, if, you, if you're really honest as a punter as well in london if everyone's really honest wembley arena is bollocks it really is. If we're, you know, and you know, that might be a like, I'm past it, you know. Right, so we won't be going back there again, will we? <laughs> <laughs> but it is. It's it's a terrible. It's, cavernous. It's a cavernous hall. hall. Yeah. Birmingham EC is rubbish as well. Mm. Manchester Nine X. Two bridges, but that's, come on, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but they're rubbish. They're not conducive to playing good gigs. And bands go in there. And w like we did, because there's no other option, there's no other place to play, or there's maybe yeah. the London Arena, but that's bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, come on. <laughs> what what else, else is there? <laughs> One fell swoop. <laughs> Geographically, Ed, you want to go around the country and just... Well, listen, like... Manchester was fine, Manchester was good. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, the I trouble is people that. never say these things, you know, they go, they don't say this, because they're, they're, for whatever reason, but they are rubbish places. Mm -hmm. I remember going to CREM there in 89, right at the back, couldn't see anything, couldn't hear anything, and it's just like a waste of... 15 quid and mm. you know, it's 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 I think I think you know a lot of the great thing about the tent is that even if you're at, even if you're at the back we've got really good sound all the way around we've got screens there so people and it's you're never that far away from the stage it's kind of like being mm. the furthest you're back it's like halfway back mm. um, at say Wembley Arena Mm. So it's got to be a better, you know, a better experience than, than going to these... The people I've spoken to already today say it looks like the Magic Kingdom. It looks yeah, absolutely right. fantastic when you walk in. It's very Disney. Yeah. 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 As and you can, because we've got the, you know, you see the lights twinkling away in the yeah. distance as you're walking across the park. And mm. So you control the sound and you control the whole thing. We control everything. <laughs> Three emails that I had that I've been saving for you, um, which uh, was about venue prices. Hang on a minute, let me find it here. Um, comes from Benj. He says, "Why are the tickets so expensive when you cut out the venue cost?" Yeah, because they're twenty-five quid a ticket. Well, that's part of. If you don't do the normal route, if you don't do the Wembley arenas, etc., etc., and you don't take out the sponsorship, it's really expensive. It is. It's really, really, really expensive. We got sixty people on the road. And it takes, and I know this is no concession to the punter who, who, you know, 20 quid versus 25 quid, of course you want to pay 20 quid. Mm. But this is what we had to balance out. It's like, okay, we could go out for like, you know, 18 quid, 18 quid 50 and play Wembley Arena. Mm. Or we could charge more break even on the tour, you know, and charge people 25 quid. And I don't know, we came to the conclusion that it was we thought it was a better, ex you know, it was worth paying five quid more. You know, you go to a football match nowadays, you're going to spend, you know, you go and see a premiership game, you spend 30 quid on ticket at least. Tell me about it, I'm a Chelsea fan. Ex <laughs> well, absolutely, and Arsenal's <laughs> the most expensive seat in the country as well. So, I mean, it is, it, uh, you know, we are sorry that it's seven quid fifty more than the usual ticket price or whatever, but I think the experience of it is more than makes up for that, hopefully, you know. Mm. Well, well maybe people disagree. We'll, we'll go back to those crap venues like Wembley Arena. And you can't now. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> oh, yeah, can't. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Done. Um, about the album, I've got a couple about Phil. Uh, a couple of questions aimed at you. It says uh, uh, one here from Jeremy. who says, "Are you pissed off that you hardly drum on Kid A and it's all drum machines?" <laughs> <laughs> Question. Um, <clears throat> so, how much of it is you and how much is machine? Um, Loads of it's you. Yeah, fair bit. I mean, we. I mean, we didn't actually approach it from a 
you know, that, the standard band performance. Here, here's the arrangement, and um, we're, we're just trying to find the, you know, what we believe to be the ultimate performance of it. Um, you know, it would be built up from taking like sections of my drumming, building up loops from, from that to build up a rhythm uh, mm. track. Um, and also, you know, Johnny uh, has this credible um, analog uh, system synthesizer thing with all, it looks like a big, you know, telephone uh, um, operators thing. But um, so, you know, stuff was coming off there. I mean, it, yeah, I think we we're just trying to open up the whole process of, you know, putting rhythm tracks together or saying, you know, you know, trying to move away from it, from from having very rigid definitions of what we did. So if, uh, Tom or Johnny came along, or Ed or Colin came along with, like, good ideas for rhythm tracks as well, then we'd use them, mm. you know, it's, and, and the, the conversely mm. in, in other areas That's as right. well. So, um, but, yeah, there's a fair bit of me on there. Yeah. Uh, right. so, I, I, don't, so. I don't feel uh, <laughs> left out. <laughs> Didn't think so. Because... Uh, I read somewhere that you, you, for maybe one of the tracks, maybe more, you were just told to go into a room and come up with whatever you could. There was a load of computers in there or something, did I get yeah. that right? And you just came up with different loops, sounds, whatever it might have been. So it was truly experimental yeah, it was. throughout. Yeah, um, um, well, Nigel was funny. Nigel was really good because he said that in, uh, Nigel, Nigel Godrich produced it. He, he we had this thing at the beginning of the year and Johnny apparently didn't enjoy this two weeks but Nigel was said like we'd completed some songs and we hadn't completed others and we were starting and rather than you know we'd had the break after Christmas he said all right we're gonna we're gonna let's split up into two groups and we had two weeks of totally ex I mean it was real sort of workshop experimental stuff mm. and it kind of I think we got a lot of that stuff out of our system you know, we weren't allowed to pick that the, the, the Nigel said the rules were nobody was allowed to play drums, nobody was allowed to pick up a guitar. The only things that the only thing that could be used were sort of acoustic, uh, were uh, electronic, you know, computers, synths, etc., etc. And you know, out of all of that, I, you know, there was sort of probably it was really good fun. Twenty percent of it was was good, and the eight, other eighty percent of it was utter rubbish. It's like being a student, or yeah, anything, exactly. It? It's like so yeah. afterwards we went off for a pint of snake bite. Yeah. <laughs> Socialist worker. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it, it it was good for us in that sense because mm -hmm. it kind of freed us up even more. It was it was it's quite cathartic by the sounds of it. Yeah, though. and you sort of you know you you kind of realised the the that sometimes it can be quite valid of of of, of just this this phrase that we used to say just throw some shit at it you know mm. just just be random and some sometimes mate you know you'd be random and 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 can make sense out of the, the 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 chaos out of that and find something that really fits in well and that's that's quite exciting was much of it used from that those, um, those experimental stages bits i mean there's a, there's there's one track that's possibly going that will will come out next year um, no, but not a lot. Not a lot, no. <laughs> was, uh, so it was, it, it was like playpen time. Or, yeah, yeah, I mean, there was like exactly. stupid stuff at like midnight. There's a track called that we nicknamed Innocence Civilian. <laughs> <laughs> it's have us trawling around the gravel outside, you know. I mean, it really, yeah, <laughs> you, you, you sort of don't After take 18 it. pints of snake bite, obviously. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's just a great thing about having our own place as well. Yeah. I mean, that's what we've been working towards for, yeah, for years. For years, and, uh, you know actually having the opportunity to, to go and be Pratt somewhere yeah. in private. Do you think this album would have been finished if you hadn't got that studio done? Oh, uh, we couldn't yeah. have done, and we'd have, we'd have run up the most exorbitant mm. studio bills, you know, we, we, if, if you're talking about, a, you know, a, a grand a day is the going rate in most top studios. Wow. And which is obviously a lot of money, and mm. and we were doing four day weeks, but you, four day weeks, and you can't book out just four out of the seven days, so we would mm. have, you know, think about, I don't know, what is it, 15, 20, 25 odd weeks? 25 odd weeks at 7 times 25. You know, that's a lot, that's of, money. A lot of money. Then, yeah. the, then, the, rec then the mixing and I'll then. I'll take 15 to 1 on it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Have I got anyone at 6 grand a week? He's, he's actually the, um, the, the turf accountant of the band. He's, uh, <laughs> <come on. laughs> so he's a lovely runner. <laughs> It's uh, Paul Anderson, this is XFM. My guests today are Phil and Ed from Radiohead. Do you want to take a break? Do you want any more no. juice or coffee or sandwiches or anything? Oh, Phil, feel free. I'm going for that juice, actually. For the juice, it's okay. Fun. All right. Was there ever a sense when you were making this album of, of being in competition with OK Computer? Uh, mm. Ed? 
Um, I don't know. I mean, you could you could you could have asked the same question about the Benz, and I think and um, because I think the Benz is 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 a is a great album, um, and in in its form we couldn't have bettered it. And I think the same thing about OK Computer. I think the thing about OK Computer was that it really was. I know this sounds strange, but it really was a live album in many respects. Eighty eighty five ninety percent of it was recorded live, and because we'd honed these songs in live we'd we'd got them we'd rehearsed them pretty much we worked out all the parts we'd worked out the arrangements played them live and so what we were doing on okay computer was merely um not merely but trying to get the best performance of the song playing in a room mm. um and there was on this record um there was a feeling of well we have to move away from that and how do we do that well probably one of the easiest ways is to move away from playing live in the studio together and then there are other things like the guitar issue, which um, I think that the guitarists, all of us, we were fairly bored by the instruments, if the truth be told, but really didn't know, you know, if, you know, I play guitar and that's all I play. I'm not like Tom and Johnny. Tom and Johnny are like multi instruments instrumentalists. So it's like you suddenly go, oh, panic, and you go, well, I'm bored of the thing that I'm playing, but what can you do? And I think this whole album was really the sort of, it was confronting a lot of um, uh, it was confronting a lot of uh, insecurities about what you do within the band and how musically we had to change and all these things. It was a constant reevaluation. It was constant kind of, you know, not going back to if 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 we were at all felt we were going over old ground. It was like it was it was it was it was pushed away. Mm. Um, and so I mean, at times it was incredibly difficult, but. It was eventually, you know, you all get the, you all get the way, you know, it's kind of like, oh, this is actually really liberating. Mm. And um, Did any one person drive that? I mean, Tom. Tom. Yeah. Yeah, he really did. And he was really, really, really emphatic about, like, um, what he didn't want it to be like. He didn't know what he wanted it to be like. You know, he was listening to a lot of, you know, warp stuff. Um, Otec Rafex Twin and, and you know and when we we'd had like four months off or whatever and we reconvened we did an amnesty show at the end of 97 and we reconvened in the studio in in beginning of uh, 99 was it no the end of 98 sorry end of 98 amnesty show beginning of 99 we went to Paris and it was it was you know Tom was into this thing and he he was very much he he drove it in the sense that he he kind of he would be the first one to to like kick if it sounded at all you, if he sounded at all you know uh, retro for us too much like Radiohead almost yeah, yeah yeah and 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 that was good although at times you know th there was kind of like you one felt like you know we wanted to change but sometimes you have to be a bit patient you know change involves a lot of time mm -hmm. and it's interesting I mean Tom was the first one to 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 to, to change but you know people move in different ways and you have to you can't you know if you're a guitarist you can't then suddenly become a noise stroke keyboard merchant the next day you have to be inspired by something you hear or records that you hear mm -hmm. so it, to be able to pick up those yeah. those those ways or whatever and also i don't think you want to completely cut yourself off from the ways that you've worked beforehand yeah you know i mean there's something about when the five of us are, are playing together i mean there's you know that for us that produces exciting results yeah um uh, and you know you're worried that those elements have gone completely out of the window but you're right i mean you do have to go the other way at points yeah just so that you can actually see the value of what you've done before i think yeah um uh, and so you know i mean there uh, there are track there are tracks which you know which probably would be recognizable as as being in the mould of things that we've done before, mm. um, but they're not really on Kid A, are they? No, they're not. <laughs> well, the first, the first recognisable song for me was um, "How to Disappear yeah. Completely," yeah. which you know, there's a knowing look from both of you about that. So that yeah. that's quite. But uh, and and that is what you you first think, yeah, okay, this there's a parking space next to High and Dry, and it fits there quite nicely. If you see what I mean, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm not sure if it does. So, so that's that's an uh, a car wash next to Hindra. <laughs> yeah. Hindra's in the car wash. Yes, yeah. being waxed. I take that. Yeah, I take okay. that. Um, whereas uh, 
the first two tracks on the album are, I think, quite brave openers. I mean, uh, uh, everything in its right place. It's well, very much what you would say is not an, uh, instantly recognisable. Well, Chris and Bryce and Brian, our manager, said, well, Chris particularly said, like, what do you want, you know, we're talking about the track openers, but what is the first track that you would like people to hear? And unanimously, we all said everything in its right place. And it was, I mean, that was the track that was mm -hmm. first, it was the first, first completed, it was recorded, finished last summer, and it was Tom and Nige. This song had been kicking around, we tried it in Paris, we tried it in Copenhagen mm -hmm. in a band format, hadn't really worked. Tom and Nige, we were at Batsford House out in Gloucestershire, went away into the room for an evening and worked on it. And came out, you know, and remember coming, you know, that night or later that night, hearing what the next morning, thinking, this is just amazing. Mm. This is this is wonderful. This is like, you know, the the potential of using this new technology, you know, not resorting to guitars and and the whole thing of it. And it was, it was. It's very much a case of letting go. Yeah. To me, you know, along with that, okay, you, you hear it as quality there. Yeah. But along with that, come all the insecurities. Like, well, I, I'm not playing. I, I didn't play. I'm not. That's, right. That. <laughs> that's but, right. You know, I mean, I mean, in a way, that song was brilliant because it did bring up a lot of those issues. It forced the issue immediately. Those issues right. And, um, and you, to be genuinely sort of delighted that you've been working for six months on on this record and something great has come out of it and you haven't contributed to it, <laughs> it's a really liberating feeling. It's like, you could say, fuck, I've been well, I've been playing guitar for six months and everything I've done is crap. But, um, it, you know, it doesn't... From a listener point of view, I have to say, it's, it, it's a good call, because it really starts, it really... It sets, sounds like the beginning of something, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it definitely right. sets the tone of it. I mean, it, it's the key to this record, I think, that everyone who's listened to it and, and gets it, it's like... It's like, well, I think probably like OK Computer, it takes a few listens and you've got to find the space. You know, there is, I know it sounds a bit wanky, but there is a certain space for this record. You know, you, you, you've got to be in a certain frame of mind. If you don't play this record before you go out clubbing, on a Saturday no, night so or whatever, have a good night. you will not. <laughs> when you come back, you can play the record, absolutely, but there's a certain space to it, and it hasn't got, you know, it hasn't, I mean, everything that's right places, I think it's really, it's it's really tense and actually, in its own way, yeah. really emotional, but it, mm. it appears, it doesn't have the, sort of the, the obvious huge crescendos mm. that, that have existed on previous, you know, tracks and records mm. and ours. Um, and to go back to a couple of emails and a couple of those awkward questions. There's the a few have come in about the Q interview where it would seem um, that ordinarily you'd think that the, the two of you here, I've got the do-gooder and the militant. Um, and coming out of that interview, there seemed to be um, a bit of friction, some frisson in the band there, uh, whereby some of the band wanted melodic songs and other people didn't, and then all of a sudden the uh, the barrier went down and it was, no, this is the way we're going to do it. And uh, one of the emails I had was saying to you, Ed, was, you know, how did you feel after it was quoted in Q that Tom thought that it was ridiculous what you thought and well, there's no <laughs> way that was going to be like that? So. No, because the, 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 the thing is, it's all about what you remember about it and what I remember. You know, it's like a long time ago, and that's... Uh, my, my memory of it is that we all agreed <laughs> when we were rehearsing for Amnesty, mm -hmm. we were rehearsed for a month and we started playing because we, we we were just playing new material before the amnesty show and then two days before we played we rehearsed the old stuff up. but we'd agreed i <laughs> that's what i remember we agreed on fucking three minute pop songs as the uh, antidote to o okay computers more prog elements and looking back on it i mean uh, initially we, we just when, when we first started recording in Paris, I mean, we didn't actually really sit down, did we, no. and say, this is what we all want to no. to, to get from this album. I mean, no. that didn't really come till about yeah. six months in, did it? And it, yeah. But, <laughs> you know, where do you start? It, it's, <laughs> it's, tip, it's kind of, you know, it's a band in, it was a band who were full of indecision, and, I mean, you know, that Q article was, uh, it was the first interview we'd done for ages, and I think that we... We were all interviewed separately. It was and Mr. and Mrs. wasn't it? Was all taken off into a little cube because <laughs> 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 all asked the same questions and all came up with totally different answers. Yeah, and we, we, we were, you know, yeah. we were a little green, you know. We, 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 Out we, of practice. I yeah, you have say. to be a bit yeah. savvy, especially in print, you know, yeah. like TV and radio is kind of, you know, it's there, they can... 
but yeah, that's it's true. Le- it's, um, tell me about Wembley Arena again. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a great place to play. <laughs> the great I, thing, <laughs> the great thing about the radio is that when, you, when people can hear what you're saying, they can hear the way you say it. So it's exactly. never, it's never in out of context. Yeah. You can't you know. get any irony over and 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 and. People have mentioned that Q article, and I just read it and go, well, you know, just you, you laugh at it. I mean, that's just indicative of of a band at that stage and a band who who just are very unsure of where they're going and mm. what people do remember and what people don't remember. We were in the studio for nearly two years, so yeah. there's a lot of stuff that doesn't. But get... also, I think you know that Q article is very representative of how we are. You yeah, know, we are five very different people, and that does create a lot of sparks at points. Yeah, but also that's I think that's what you know, drives the band along, really. Totally. Really, and the yeah. whole creative process along as well. Yeah. Totally. Oh, what a nasty expression, creative yeah, process. I totally agree with that. <laughs> Strike that one out. <laughs> yeah, we'll edit that one for you, Phil, don't worry. Um, but just to round off on this, this, this person who emailed, it was uh, Matthew from Worcester Park, he says, um, what do you think about Tom... Do you think he's developed a kind of megalomaniac tendency with the analogy that he, that the band were the UN and he was America? No, I mean, I think, you know... If anything's gone the other way. Exactly. It's, um, yeah. The I mean, UN thing I thought was a brilliant analogy because it is, I mean, the thing is at the end of the day, it's a very, we have to agree five, you know, we have to agree it's, 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 it's five, it's five people and it is democracy, mm. but, you know, on this record, um, Tom really, really, you know, more so for just Paul, you know, Paul us. He was so emphatic about, I mean, really, 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 really emphatic about how he didn't want it to be. Mm. And when you've got somebody as driven as that, you know, you 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 know, you do you you do get pulled along by mm. it an issue, and then you kind of see the light yourself, and and you take it on board, but. Um, no, I mean, he's just, you know, he's completely, I think for him having the, you know, all this time off and just working on the records and getting away from the Tom York, you know, persona that by OK Compete, Computer reached some kind of, you know, ridiculous, sort of almost cartoonish type. Yeah, of, 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 it almost had become a yeah, parody. You know, and, and, and people that's... were saying, oh, he's, he's totally shagged out, he's on a nervous breakdown, and yeah. it's going to be jelly. Yeah. 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 And also, I think, you know, that was kind of enforced with meeting people is easy as well oh, yeah. which is you know it's a great piece yeah. but also but it's only actually representative of one part of that year as well that's right you know two weeks after japan we're in australia yeah. we're all go-karting in the sunshine and you know yeah. it's like the you know so i mean yeah all the elements of you know of what could make the, the band really good and really enjoyable to be it, enjoyable to be in they were all there then it's just you know we needed the time to actually sift sift the the wheat from the chaff really absolutely well given that i mean where do you think tom you know creatively is now filming has he do you think that he's probably delivered his best work to you with this album do you think he's reached a creative peak i mean no actually i think today's more of a starting point Mm. really isn't it it's kind of more more of a statement of intent of what we want to do with with our studio with anything that we do with the band now Mm. um and you know i think think we're actually looking further probably further ahead than we ever have done as Mm. a band Mm. and we wouldn't be doing that if we felt our best work was done now Mm. we've we've sort of you know the way that we record now has completely changed Mm. and in actual fact it kind of it 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 really it the, the possibilities and the permutations are sort of quite are endless at the moment mm-hmm. so we can I, it, it feel, as you said it feels as though we could be doing doing this in four or five years time as opposed to just next year which i think we've tended to with 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 the band the records that we made like the bends and okay computer you know, we we will live and die, but you know that they, they were made with that intent of we shall live and mm. die by this, and and this has got to be the best thing now, and because it might not be, we might not be doing this in a year's time. Yeah. And for the first time, this is it feels as though there is a, this is there's a different way of making music now. The possibilities, and mm. and they don't have to be wrapped up in in sort of playing as we did before. Yeah. And we, with with Tom, do you feel as if he has? How do you think he's going to cope with once this album comes out? People are going to be dissecting the lyrics to buggery because they always do. They'll, you know, loads of uh, university graduates will be looking at how to disappear completely and writing dissertations on it. <laughs> and uh, you know, I mean, how how's he shaping up in that respect from from uh, you know being able to handle it? Do you think, Phil? I think at the moment, I mean, we're because we're out on tour at the moment. I mean, that in itself creates a little bit of a bubble, doesn't it? Yeah, you have to. 
so I think to a certain extent we're cutting ourselves off from from that side of things really yeah. um, and I don't know we you know we can't we, we have absolutely no idea how this album's going to be really uh, be be received so in terms of how you know we're going to respond we'll have we'll to see, see really. yeah um, but you know the great thing is that we, we're actually going to be going back in in and recording again in November which for us you know which is like will be five six weeks after releasing an album yeah. and that's an amazing position mm. to be in we've never been able to do that we've had to leave it for at least 16 months before we can mm. actually start doing that again so you know I think even though you know you, you do get uh, the reviews coming through for the records or whatever and but you can actually move on from them because you, you're moving on to the next stage already. Yeah. You know, you, you can actually address the issues that come up from that very constructively in 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 the studio rather than sitting around, you know, stewing on, on tour thinking, well, there's nothing we can do about this. We're just going to go out and be a jukebox now for the next 10 months or so. The other album is done, is it? It's finished? Basically, yeah. Mm. You know, we've got tracks finished. We had we had two, two albums worth of material. Right. And some, some of the songs that we've been playing live, well, a lot of them are, are, are ones that are not on Kid A, new songs that aren't on Kid A, songs like Knives Out, I mean, people know them, they're, they're all over the net, probably there's Knives Out, and there's um, one that's a tentatively titled Egyptian song, and they're amazing tracks, and I might be wrong, and, mm. and um, but they didn't, they just didn't make Kid A, but they, they've got to be released, because they're, they're, they're some of the best stuff we've ever done. There's a couple of uh, emails that we had about some of them, um, which were, uh, I must admit, new to me, but there's a couple of d dodgy bootlegs of, on, off of uh, Napster, I think Knives Out was one of them. Yeah. Um, well, that's the song that we did, we played the on the webcast, yeah. Oh, around right. the Christmas tree with acoustic guitars and... Very Val Dunican, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Down to our Cardis. Yeah. <laughs> Cardis, but nothing else, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, this, is, uh, this is quite good. This is, um, do you enjoy still playing the old material? Or has it become necessary? And uh, also, uh, secondary question to this is, um, now you've got rid of your guitars, can I have them? That's... <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> we might so, want them again. So, I know you said the, sh the set changes every night, yeah. but there's, but there are the, you, you, well, that you played just last night, which yeah. you don't very often. It's, mm. It depends, it's funny, it's, you know, like, some of the old songs work really well, like, just, we, we didn't play much in the European tour in the summer, just didn't feel right, but in this tour it feels great, um, Fake Plastic Trees, we sort of play, you know, every other night, um, I mean, there are songs like, I mean, Paranoid, we played every night and mm. Street Spirit. I think no, we haven't played that every night. No. Um, mm. But I, I think in, in the summer tour that there was a, a very stark contrast for us between the, the new material and, and the old material. At points, it felt some of the old materials a bit like going through the motions, mm. really. Right. Um, but I think you know you you actually have to find some some kind of new mm. angle on on the new material, don't you? Mm. Um, and actually try and, you know, bring, I don't know, it's, I think that there's like, uh, because the, the, the new material now, actually because we've played it quite a bit, feels, uh, feels very familiar, it feels very established within the set, so, mm. um, I think everything is, is on an equal footing now, really, and so, uh, there isn't that that level of contrast between the new and the old now. I right. Think. Mm. And are you playing any songs that are on the new album that we haven't seen yet on this tour? Well, on... On the next album, the one that's coming? Yeah, I mean, last night we played Knives Out. Oh, right. We played, uh, well, we've been playing Dollars, on and, Cents. Dollars and Cents. When do you th when's this, this next album likely to see release? Well, we haven't actually um, managed to find a, a track listing for it yet. Right. Um, we've got to do that. We've got to do that, yeah. Take a note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah uh but we we don't want to leave it too long really because i mean all this material came out of the same session as well so you know it was like a year down the line after kid a it would just it just feel as you know flogging the same door same same yeah. horse for for quite a while really yeah um It'd be great so if it was I, I mean i think the idea is to have it before april of next year yeah so or april march april that would be ideal um because you know, I, I, I mean, I think one of the things, one of the, th the, the things that we've tried to 
with this whole way we're doing it now, touring when we want to, recording when we want to just get into the cycle of, of basically bringing out a record every year. You know, and, 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 you know, like Bowie did in the 70s, he was like, he just used to throw it out. And, mm -hmm. and I think we feel that at the moment that there's, that two, three years to wait for records involves too much scrutiny. And we're terrible at that. You know, I think we, we haven't really got back to that stage where we felt like we can throw stuff out, you know, and, and that would be really exciting. And, and part of that is that if you do that a record every year, yeah, okay, then the odd Duff track comes out that you, you think at the time is great, but in hindsight, you know, doesn't, doesn't stand up to it. Mm. But I think we'd much rather do that than that kind of level of scrutiny that we had for the Benz and OK Computer that is really, really wearing and, 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 and means that you actually only bring out a record every two or three years. So there is a kind of trade-off that goes on there. Mm. Um, so but that, that'll be incredible. I mean, that's, if, you, if you're that prolific at the moment and you're on that creative role, then why not, I guess? Yeah, you've got yeah. to. You've got to, It's like a window of opportunity. Yeah. If you've got it, you've got to grab it. Because you ain't got, you know, you, if, you, if you're honest about this, if, the, if you're honest about bands that you do, and you look at the history of bands and, and the way that bands in music and the history of rock and roll, they have, they have their peak periods. And it feels like we're kind of just getting in there. We really are. I mean... That w and we've got and we've got to grab it because if we you know it won't be around in ten years time mm. you know you it just it, it the nature of it is it, it it just doesn't you know you look at it if it were to then it would be astonishing but but um, mm. you are know. you aware that maybe with Kid A some of the people that you may have brought in um, like with Paranoid Android for example mm. and first time I heard that it was like this is Bohemian Rhapsody meets the Good pixels. Vibrations or right. the Pixies right yeah. and. Uh, Oh, that sort of opened some doors to people that kind of maybe, you know, they, they knew Creep but they didn't know anything else. You might have pissed those people off entirely now with Kid A and you may have alienated a few people. Are you aware of the kind of, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think, is it a brave decision with Kid A or is it a risky decision, do you think? Or do you not see it in those terms? It's the only decision. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And it, yeah, it's, uh, um, that's the only album we could have made. Yeah. I mean, if, if we hadn't made that album, I mean, it's, you know, short of sounding a bit melodramatic about it, but we wouldn't have actually made an album. Yeah. We, we wouldn't have existed as a band no. anymore. Yeah. So, um, yes, and, uh, I mean, we, we don't enjoy playing playing it safe or, no. or, you know, making the obvious decisions, really. And we've, so, we've never made records to because we thought that people who'd liked our past records, you know, God forbid, you know, imagine if we're trying to make a record like the Benz after releasing a single like Pop Is Dead, you know, <laughs> people like Pop Is Dead, so we'll do something. You know, I mean, it just yeah. doesn't work like that. I mean, and, and inevitably, there's going to be some people who liked OK Computer who won't like it. Yeah. But there'll be other music out there that they like anyway. Of course, you know? of course. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, we're only part of a, 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 a much bigger picture, really. So. Yeah. Is there anything left to prove for Radiohead, Phil, do you think? Uh, anything for us to prove? Um, I think, actually, yesterday we finally got, you know, the, the finished product of Kid A in our hands, you mm. know, with all, all the artwork and, and everything, and that was a very satisfying moment because it seemed very unlikely that we would um, reach that stage at points last year, didn't it? Mm. Um, so that felt as though it proved something to, to us on, on a very personal level, I think. Um, but whether we've got things to prove now, I, I don't know if that's, if, if that's pr the right way to to approach things now. Mm, uh, I, th so I think it's driven the process along until before, now. Before, yeah. But um, that, that it can actually be a very negative process, really. Mm. Uh, I think, you know, we're actually, we want to actually, the whole thing to be driven along now by the this, this sense that yeah we love doing this we're, this is like a real celebration of music or whatever um and we enjoy working together uh, the five of us and with nigel as well when when we're in the studio you yeah. know there, there is something there that um works so yeah yeah very roundabout answer to that question well no it, it, uh, it's a very good answer roundabout <laughs> but good <laughs> which is fine um I know there was loads of things that people wanted to to ask you. There was a couple of things about Jubilee 2000, which I know people wanted to get. I mean, 
essentially if you go to your website um, mm. there's ways and means and you point them in the right direction of what they can do and how they can get involved in that so uh, I won't take up uh, any more time talking about that but um, I'm going to play Optimistic so that's fast becoming my favourite record only because you drum like a whirling dervish oh. on it <laughs> and I can't wait do you do that live say you do that live we do fantastic yeah. great because I'm going to see that tonight um, so tell me about Optimistic um, which is uh, the f if I'm right in thinking it's the first sort of full band record uh, track on the record it seems anyway it's, well after um after uh, how to disappear yeah right okay um so again you know we it was one of those tracks that that seemed to work it was one of the few tracks that seemed to work in a band format playing in a room and um it slightly suffered because it was because we were trying to move away from that yeah and and it is that kind of fighting against okay this is working but maybe we should try you know try it somehow you know how should we try it this different and eventually we got to the stage of you sort of you go okay well this is one of those tracks that does work like we're in a we're in a band playing in a room so um i think that's one of the strengths of the album a lot's been made of this experimental side and that's yeah. fantastic of course one of the strengths of the album it seems for me and it is a compelling and and bizarre and you know takes you to places that you wouldn't have thought you'd go with Radiohead but the balance that you've got yeah. between what you're saying yeah uh, I mean that's the thing that you, you uh, but that's the, that's like what you were saying earlier about you do the experimental stuff but and you you ditch the guitar or whatever and the then the the, the 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 classic setup for two months but when you go back to it it's like oh this is great you know the actual physical thing yeah. of being in a room and and we'd spent like you know 15 years getting to this position of a school band to start off barely being able to play their instruments and there's this there's this perpetual struggle that goes on you know when you're you're trying to find it. and after 15 years or and after you know three records and x amount of gigs and and you just realise that that oh yeah no we can play pretty well together and it's it's nice that that, that those tracks on on Kid A that reflect that as well and and it's mm -hmm. it's you know it's it's the real it's the real deal you know as they say yeah well maybe they don't say. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you in your part of town. Yeah, you? man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for spending the time with us today. It's been an absolute Pleasure. delight Pleasure. Uh, talking to you. I hope yeah. it's not been too much of a trial for no, you. No, not at all. And, enjoyable. and um, uh, you know, again, it seems trite, but best luck with the album because I know that it's gonna it's gonna confound a few people, and that's not a bad thing. That's it's, a good thing. It's yeah. about time a few a few more bands push the envelope a bit further, yeah. and um, can't wait to see you tonight. And thanks for taking the time out. Cheers, Paul. Cool. Cool. Cheers. <laughs>